and it might just be the greatest tool in our toolbox on the quest of self-care, self-love, self-improvement, self-development that we have. You know, I believe we all have the right to be creative. We all have the right to tell our own unique stories. We just need a place where we can actually do that. This is one of my most favorite topics to talk about in the world because I truly believe in the life-changing healing power of journaling. So as you may have guessed, this video is all about journaling. Why I do it, how I do it, how my practice has organically evolved this year, my easy method to maintain a regular and consistent practice, my take on shadow work, my rules for journaling, yes, I do have some, including the one life-changing guideline I will never break, plus some special rituals I do before I even sit down to write. I'll share with you some of my most personal journals with examples of my own creative pages. We'll also spend some time journaling together later on in the video. Thanks so much for being here and keeping me company. I wish you many hours of joy, healing and creativity with your own journaling process, whatever that may look like for you. And cheers to you if you're having a morning brew. So I just journal now. I don't really think about you know why I'm doing it I just know there's loads of benefits for me but I suppose if I was trying to describe to you you know why I do it and the purpose of journaling I would definitely say it's the most amazing powerful healing tool you know if you're thinking about a journey of self-development and self-improvement and transformation it's a place for everything and it, it really helps you learn about yourself and so in a way the main project of journaling for me anyway is project self project wendy project me if you like and i think that's what i'm gonna name my journal next year project wendy or project me or something like that because that has been the biggest takeaway the biggest reveal of journaling throughout the years that i've been doing it it's a way to capture things without a filter because i'm not doing it for anybody apart from myself and I don't necessarily have to show it. I mean, I do tend to show it on here, but you know, I definitely don't have to. So I'm going to designate a little bit of time just to review all my books and share them all with you. I did actually work on the cover the other day because I just fancied changing it. Yeah, I was getting a bit fed up with the other one. It wasn't quite right and I didn't like it. So yeah, I did a painted cover. And in fact, I did as well. I painted the cover of my other journals as well. So this one's more of a sketchbook actually. And then my altered book, which I haven't worked in for ages, but I painted the front of that as well. And I thought, oh, it'd be fun to, to revisit that at some point as well. So I kind of revamped those and it's just rekindled my interest really of actually working in it. And you know, a lot of these pages are finished now, but I do still have all my places to write. And because it's getting to be obviously the end of the year, I would just like to conclude the pages that need some extra bits and bobs and have got, you know, places for me to write, but maybe I just haven't got round to actually writing the things in. I know I've said so many times on my videos, haven't I, about the therapeutic values of the process of journaling. It's just a place where I can find calm and process any fears or problem solve. I can find clarity when I reflect on things that maybe have happened in the day or the week or the month and I can go over them again by rereading and I can find solutions and perspectives that perhaps I wouldn't see, you know, while I'm actually in the moment of experiencing 
those feelings and emotions. You know, I like the process of writing side by side the making of prettier pages and adding the creativity elements into it and intertwining the writing, inspirations, the quotes, the affirmations, the gratitudes, the scrapbooking, the dream journaling, sometimes even bullet journaling, keeping a, of a diary. It's the best place for me to gather everything together all in one place, to keep all my ideas tidy, if you like. One of the things I really love to do is to go through old journals and, you know, grab bits and bobs from them that are still really, really relevant to me. And that can really be a good inspiration for a journaling session for me as well. Ceremonies, large and small, have the power to focus attention to a way of living awake in the world. That, I think, is the power of ceremony. It marries the mundane to the sacred. The water turns to wine, the coffee to a prayer. The material and the spiritual mingle, like grounds mingled with hummus, transformed like steam rising from a mug into the morning mist. If you'd like to know more as well about, you know, how I really get into the zone, into my flow of journaling and what kind of things I do before I set out and start, I have got a video which I made quite a long time ago now called Art Rituals and it goes through all the little things that help inspire me and make it into a more kind of sacred, personal and meaningful experience by doing these little rituals. You know, you can adapt them and create your own as well to make them really, really special and unique to you. It can be a really deep, raw, vulnerable experience and you can really get in touch with yourself if you give yourself a moment and just hone in on what you're doing. And it can be a really important part of the process as well to help unjumble and simplify everything so that you really can be in the moment with your journals and your thoughts. That for me is when it becomes a truly healing experience. And I will quickly say here as well, because I do get asked, you know, are there any rules for journaling? Now we're all unique and we all journal differently so in that sense there are no rules but I like to have three little rules just for myself really and one of the rules I have for myself is a real the game changer if you like it's the really important key to the whole thing for me so you can obviously decide your own rules or indeed if you want to have any but my first rule for myself is no judgment or expectation so I have my blank pages, it can cause the fear and I don't want to have any extra fears or obstacles in my way that make me hesitate from starting the process, if that makes sense. So I know even if I make really ugly pages that I don't like, it's okay. My second rule as well is mainly to do with social media. Obviously the world's very different with the land of social media. And so being an artist online, you know, this can be a real issue for me. And lots of you out there may also have this same struggle at times. So my second rule for myself is that I don't put pressure to share my stuff out there if I don't want to. Maybe there's some pages that are really super private and I don't even want James to read. And that's completely allowed. We're allowed those spaces where we can completely be on our own own and safe to write and express ourselves exactly how we need to. So the third rule, the key rule if you like, is the game changer for me. If I don't do this third rule, I can still end up with some really pretty pages that I really like, but I don't get the healing and the meaning out of the process, if that makes sense. So my third most important rule is all about honesty. I have to be honest in my journal. So if I'm writing in my journal and I'm processing things that are happening, things that have happened, you know, maybe it feels a little bit raw and vulnerable. I have to be honest in here. I have to tell the truth because if I don't do that, I'm not gonna find any realizations or messages or understandings or epiphanies. And I'm not gonna lie as well, you know, it's not always easy to put your heart and soul down on a page. Maybe you've got something that you feel guilty or ashamed over. And I think if that's the case, that can be the hardest thing to actually process on a page. Most pages are gonna be, you know, quite a light color with a dark pen and it really, you know, shows up. It can be really helpful to hide some of your, um, some of your writing as well, so that it's not starkly in your face, if that makes sense. But that third rule is so important because that's when the magic happens. 
that's where the healing is, the treasure, if you like. Sometimes it's not obvious straight away, but because we've created a tangible object that we can flick through, we get the chance to read through our thoughts again, reflect, and take those lessons away. For me, there's something really comforting about it, and it allows me to have a place where I can put all my secrets and thoughts down in one place, and I feel safe and worthy and acceptable. And it might just be the greatest tool in our toolbox on the quest of self-care, self-love, self-improvement, self-development that we have. And it doesn't have to be expensive because, you know, things are really expensive right now, aren't they? And we can't always afford everything. And so as long as you've got like some pens and a few bits and bobs, you can literally make a journal out of scraps of paper and bits and bobs that you've collected. Even, you know, old menus from cafes and leaflets and things like that, you can cut up as collage paper. And I made this journal completely from scraps of paper from, from my journaling box, so from my collage box. And it was really, really easy. It's not a complex system of signatures or anything like that there's two signatures and it's really simply sewed together and I'll, I'll link the video down below in case you want to make your own one of the main things I've noticed from this review and it's not hugely surprising for me actually is that a lot of my writing I type out and that's partly because I like to touch type and I know there's a great benefit in actually you know having a pen to paper and handwriting it out and the therapeutic benefit that that brings you you know as a physical activity I also find that it's what works best for me in a certain situation and also a reality check so by that I mean I don't always sit with a beautiful fountain pen and actually feel like doing a handwritten thing you know sometimes I don't even take this journal home my bells are rattling sorry you know on the days I haven't got this at home for example and I've left it in the studio you know maybe I've got some oh God, things falling out of it maybe I've got some pages that are drying and I've left them in the studio because I've been you know painting in there or something so in that situation I do tend to go to my go-to thing if I'm really really honest and it's not romantic and it's not idyllic and it's not aesthetic but it is my laptop I have an app which I've had for years. James gave it to me years and years ago when we started traveling. So I've got years and years of entries. The app I use is day one, but I know there's loads of journaling apps out there so you could perhaps have a look. I have a little iPad mini as well. And also it's on my phone. So wherever I am, I've kind of got it with me and it all synchronizes together. So if I've done something on my laptop, it'll appear on the other gadgets as well, if that makes sense. If I was being really idealistic and judgmental on myself, I would probably force myself to you know, handwrite all my entries in my journal. But it doesn't work in the way I journal. So part of the reality check for me is, you know, how do I actually journal? I don't journal every day. Often a lot goes on up here and I do type it out maybe two or three times a week, all the things that are going on up here. Often I'll wake up in the morning and I'll have loads of stuff that's been processing overnight and I grab my laptop and I can type. I don't even have to open my eyes because I can touch type. And so that's easier for me and the other absolute benefit of typing it out for me is it's so fast it's so much faster than me you know writing so once i've actually got that i can then dip into that whether i have got any bits and bobs that i've printed off yeah i printed some bits and bobs off yesterday so i can either print out what i've written what i've typed up and print it out cut it up journal with it or I can literally copy it off my computer straight into my journal. And so that really works for me. I can get to the studio, open my laptop, you know, when I want a journaling session, have a little read and review of what I've written maybe over the past week or two, and then decide what sort of pages I want to work on and what theme and message and process that is, if that makes sense. And that is what works for me. And so, you know, there's no rules here. So I'm not expecting that everybody does it like that and do leave in the comments below you know how how your process goes in, in a step-by-step -step way if you like because it's often quite helpful for others to read how other people actually you know go about journaling because if you haven't journaled before or, or you haven't journaled for ages and you're trying to get back into it but you don't quite know how to do it you can try some different ways and see see which works best for you in different situations It's been the new moon last night. So in the UK, it was about three minutes to 11 p.m. last night. So I was asleep actually, or reading in my bed. I'd like to do some new moon intentions. 
and I've been working on these um, paper dolls this week. So it's a kind of collaborative project between the fairies and the paper dolls and I'm, I'm just seeing a, you know where it organically develops but I did make a little one with the intention of you know having her in my journal and I thought she'll be great for my new moon intentions today and so that is what I'm going to use her for because of course you can literally write on anything can't you when you're doing this so let's begin shall we let's begin a process and do feel welcome to grab some of your own supplies and join in with me as well you know, you may be wondering, why not just write your journal? Why do we have to do all this creative process? And that's a really good question. I believe creativity is vital. Human beings were made to be creative. We have a need to be creative. It's part of how we express ourselves and how we learn and how we grow and how we adapt to our environments. By adding in the element of creativity into this, it makes everything so much more powerful and so much more healing. It multiplies the journaling benefits by a million, probably more. We've got the joy of the art supplies and the pretty things and the papers and textures and all the different tactile sensory elements to it, which makes it a really joyful experience. And on top of that, it's actually doing us some good as well. You know, I believe we all have the right to be creative. We all have the right to tell our own unique stories. We just need a place where we can actually do that. What if the world had more of your smile? What if the wind could spread? I think when you go really deep, that's the time when journaling has the most benefits. You know, journaling is another way of writing down our thoughts. So it's basically the same thing as thinking, but slowed down. Because the whole process of writing obviously takes longer than having thoughts. I think this gives us more time to process, gain insights. It activates both sides of the brain, accessing the subconscious mind. And it also gives the opportunity for easy reflection, so it's possible to find patterns, zoom out, have some perspective, find self-compassion, and find solutions and changes that we would like to make. It's a way to help us move forwards in the directions we wish to move. It's a tool of getting to know the self, and once we do, it's also a tool of improving and loving who we actually are. I believe it's a beautiful healing way to spend time with ourselves. Maybe there is a star with your name. One thing I know is that there should be. There is no one who has a heart as pure. There's an old proverb, isn't there, which says the pen is mightier than the sword. And I think there is power to words that include thoughts and ideas, spoken and written ones. It makes sense to me that writing your thoughts and your ideas down in your journal is a powerful energy leading you onto the road where you actually want to be. I've been journaling myself non-stop since around 2009, probably a bit before that actually, both experiencing it by doing and researching to satisfy my quest for knowledge around it. I even named my own kind of journaling, freedom journaling, in the spring of around 2017. And why did I name it freedom journaling? I have found journaling is a powerful tool on our path towards freedom a way of uncovering our unique buried treasure by processing and releasing emotions, hurts and feelings, therefore freeing ourselves from all the things we wish to be free of, which is why I named it Freedom Journaling. 
I put up monthly freedom journaling prompts as well as videos and loads of other content on my Patreon page, so feel free to check out the link in the description below. So if you haven't journaled for a while, or perhaps you've never tried it, here are some other benefits which might encourage you to give it a try. There's been scientific research around the benefits of journaling. It includes, but is not limited by the things I'm going to mention now, because I may have missed a few. <laughs> it's been shown to decrease stress, anxiety and depression. It's an aid for meditation, so it helps us slow down regulate the emotions and it even causes changes in the brain and helps new neural pathways form. This helps us to integrate a new healthier thought process around challenging emotions, helps us with boundary issues. The meditative qualities of journaling can also help reduce cortisol and the other stress hormones. We don't need to journal every day, but it's a good idea to try and have a regular kind of practice. After a period of time, we can then unlock some patterns, modify and regulate our emotions, and overcome any negative repetitions of behavior. We can zoom out, observe from a bird's eye view. We can gain awareness and knowledge of what's actually happening and what we're actually feeling. You know, when we want to make a change, we can observe from a greater perspective. We can have time to analyze and reflect when we're not actually in the moment of experiencing the turmoil or difficult emotions. We can see and find answers much more easily and problem solve much more clearly. For me, this helps me heal past hurts and experiences and it makes my feelings tangible. It helps me move forwards faster because I'm not just regurgitating all the old stuff. I'm actually stepping back and gaining that perspective, seeing what I need to let go of in order to move forwards. For me, it's not just a process of writing. It's a process of doing the work, the self work. That's the way I see it. I can draft and write stories changing my ideas on things, rewriting things, imagining things, inspiring myself to be better and keep improving. There's also even been proven physical benefits and I have talked about these in a previous video but I will just mention these again just in case you need to hear that extra burst of encouragement. So these are the physical benefits of journaling. It strengthens your immune system which is absolutely great for this time of year and also everything that we've been going through in the world. It can reduce your blood pressure, boost your mood, improve your sleep, it's a form of meditation and mindfulness, so it helps us slow down. It calms the nervous system and can even help speed up the body's healing times. It improves our mood and general well-being, helps us ground and centre when chaos is happening all around us. It can help support in forming healthy habits and managing addictive patterns and behaviours and help us let go of feelings of hopelessness and unworthiness. It can also help improve and increase memory function and help support us through things like PTSD. So I've mentioned in this video that I do like to use my day one app and type up some of my journaling, but there is an important element to actually handwriting in a physical way, because when you've actually got a physical journal, you're making your thoughts into that object, something tangible, a document or book, and you begin to form an emotional attachment and connection with it, and a relationship with its content. It starts to feel very meaningful and important to you. I've been even known to sleep with mine. 
You know, I love the combination of the digital and the physical. And for that, that's my best method, because that way I receive all the benefits of both. But any form of writing improves our language skills and communication with ourselves and others. I think it's really important to bear in mind as well to do it for the process. Like I always say on here, it's not about the finished final result. And as the old proverb goes, it's all about the journey. You know, as an artist, part of my process can be sketching and drawing, but you don't need this side of things to gain the benefits of journaling. Pure writing or adding creative touches like collage, coloured writing, doodles, photos or washi tape can add a whole other layer to the fun of it, helping us relax into the process and feel joy doing it. Flipping back through our creative pages can then give us a wonderful feeling of accomplishment. As long as the pretty pages is not the aim of the game, and we must not judge our pages. If this is you right now, I highly suggest and recommend just writing for at least some of the time. At least when you're setting out on your journaling journey. And that's not that easy to say. <laughs> I can honestly say with all the time I've spent over the years journaling, it's helped me be braver and explore my process, ideas, or even sometimes just new art materials as I allow myself to play on the playground that is my pages. A journal is your own personal sacred safe place where you get to create and express yourself in whichever way you choose. I've had a few sweeties while I've been journaling which isn't the best but anyway so I think I'm done for these pages and I've had such fun doing them it's been absolutely brilliant and I've got all my thoughts down I haven't talked you through at all any art supplies but I'm as you've seen I've mainly been using white paint pens if you do want to know about my favorite art journaling supplies there's a whole other video which I made maybe a year ago now but I'll, I'll, I'll link it up there for you because it's pretty much the same as it was and obviously this is just one type of journaling of art journaling I do like to bring the moon and the astrology into my things a little bit and if you're not into that then just ignore that but I'm really into that stuff so I like to include it in my journal so I do journal about low Loads of other stuff like who I am that's a really great question if you don't know what to journal about I suggest you um, have a go at that one because it's literally endless I think we could spend more than a lifetime journaling about the question around who am I and that's a really interesting one to play with I also journal about things that happen to me so my experiences and, and how I kind of relate to the world around me uh, I also imagine things and I put my dreams down on paper so it kind of brings them into the material world a little bit at the next stage it's part and parcel if you like of helping them become manifest of helping things become real and I love that a wonderful place to help dreams become real and what do you do when your dreams come true you dream bigger that's what you do can't see a thing dirty glasses anyway anything to do with self-worth anything to do with self-love self-improvement I journal all around issues like that and I can basically write down experiences on a daily weekly monthly basis and then I can read things again and review them and then I can see what issues are coming up for me regularly and then I can address them and go deeper it's like the quote about the onion and the layers see if I can find it here so we might already have addressed an issue, but we go deeper. So each time we do it, we cover it, we go deeper and deeper, like layers of an onion. Like layers of an onion, there is more to be peeled. And each peeling is sometimes accompanied by a fresh shedding of tears. By Heather Ash Amara, 
So, you know, it's deep, it can be painful, it can be difficult, it can be upsetting. And the onion is a great image for that because it's not just about the onion having layers, it's about, you know, when we chop an onion, it does make us cry. Yeah. It's a never-ending process, isn't it? Because we're constantly checking in with ourselves and then that helps inform the next part of the process and, and around and around we go, cycling over and over again. It gives me the opening to really check in with myself regularly and to stay in touch with myself. I've got opportunity to level up every time I come back and reflect. It's just like the inhale and exhale really, isn't it, that we were talking about last week. But I really enjoy that organic flow of the process and the fact that there's no finish line, there's no end point to it. This book, this book here is my story, it's my experiences and my reflections. Because like in the film with Kate Winslet, where she says, I am the leading lady of my own life. You know, we are the leading characters in our own lives. This gives us a place to put all that stuff down somewhere. And it's really valuable and worthy and healing and supports our self-improvement like no other tool in the toolbox. It's acceptable in here to feel the way I feel. I can keep my perspective, I can feel worthy and it's a safe place. It's the key tool on my quest for self-realisation, self-compassion and love. Yes. Now you know me, I could go on about journaling forever, so I better leave you in peace for now. Thank you so much for watching. Try to keep your lights shining bright and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. Mm. However often or however you choose to do it, Happy journaling, beautiful souls. So I've had some tech problems this morning. And James is away again, so I couldn't call on him. <sighs> the joys of tech problems for me anyway, because I'm not very techy. Mm.